Greetings to all dear students. Today we are going to take a class on ulcers. To start with, the basics of any surgical disease begins with an ulcer or a swelling or a sinus or a fistula. And uh, whenever you have a patient who is presenting with an ulcer, it's very, very important that you take an history which is very, very appropriate. And depending on the history, you will have to arrive at a part of the diagnosis and then clinical examination will give you the other half of your diagnosis. Coming to an ulcer, ulcer by definition is a breach in the continuity of epithelium. It might be a cutaneous breach or it might be a mucosal breach and that has happened naturally. A man-made incision cannot be called an ulcer. Whenever you talk about an ulcer, ulcer can be differentiated into clinically into a way where we have subclassification of that and pathologically where you have further subclassification of that. So ulcers can be classified clinically and pathologically. The clinical classification of ulcers are basically three. One is a healing ulcer Second one is a spreading or a non-healing ulcer and third one is called a callus or a chronic ulcer. So when you're talking about a healing ulcer, it's very, very important that whenever you see a diagnosed patient or whenever you see a patient who is coming to you, it's very, very important to give a clinical diagnosis rather than a pathological diagnosis. The clinical diagnosis of ulcer, especially a healing ulcer, depends on various factors or the various parameters under which you examine an ulcer. An ulcer is always examined by inspection and palpation. Auscultation and percussion, percussion and auscultation are not a part of ulcers normally, but in exceptional circumstances, you can have these two factors also being considered. But inspection and palpation are very, very important. So the parts of an ulcer always determine what is that ulcer going to be in your diagnosis. So, the surrounding area of the ulcer is called the surrounding tissue. Just after the surrounding area, you have the margin of the ulcer. And below the margin of the ulcer, which is the area, and that area is called the edge of the ulcer. And when you look down below the edge, you will have the floor of the ulcer. So, basically, when you are inspecting an ulcer, you have the surrounding tissue, you have the margin of the ulcer, you have the edge of the ulcer, you have the floor of the ulcer. So these are all inspectory findings of an ulcer and every ulcer is described on the basis of this along with a very very important palpatory finding that is the base of the ulcer. So the base of the ulcer is never an inspectory finding, it is a palpatory finding because the base is the tissue on which the ulcer sits. It might be subcutaneous tissue, it might be a fascia, it might be muscle, it might be periosteum, it might be bone. So whatever you call the base of the ulcer forms a part of the ulcer which is inseparable from the diagnosis. The base of the ulcer will tell you what type of an ulcer this is. Coming to the healing ulcer. Healing ulcer, the surrounding tissue will not have any signs of inflammation. That means either the signs are resolving or doesn't have any inflammation as such. So it might be not having redness, it might not be having edema, it not be uh, tender, it might be just resolving in its presentation. After the surrounding tissue, you see the margin of the ulcer. When you look at the margin of the ulcer from the top, when you have a vision from the, uh, from the, from the upper part of the ulcer, you see that that might be regular. It is always regular. So the margin of the ulcer, <coughs> which is regular, suggests a healing ulcer. <coughs> Along with that, you will have a sloping edge on a um, healing ulcer. Along with the sloping edge, you can have a base of the ulcer, the floor of the ulcer. The floor of the ulcer will tell you whether it is healing or not healing. The floor of the ulcer will contain always healthy granulation tissue. That is the ulcer, healing ulcer. <coughs> Non-healing ulcer always will have factors 
which are detrimental to healing of the ulcer <coughs> either it will have something which is suggestive of ongoing infection or ongoing inflammation or it is a malignancy which is going on so depending on the type of the pathology which is underlying it the non healing ulcer will present in that way so when you talk about a non healing ulcer the edge will be having either a punched out edge or an undermined edge or a rolled out edge or a inverted edge or it will be flush with the uh floor of the ulcer and the surrounding tissue will have always signs of inflammation or signs of malignancy <coughs> that is very very important when you consider the edge of the ulcer so when you consider the base of the ulcer the floor of the ulcer especially a non healing ulcer it's very very important that the floor of the ulcer always will have necrotic debris will have slough will have zero sanguinous or zero purulent discharge that is suggestive of a non healing ulcer and the base of the ulcer especially when you palpate the base of the ulcer always will have tenderness will be indurated that is a non healing ulcer a callous ulcer always will have a uh, hyperpigmented surrounding tissue and the margin will be regular at places irregular at certain places and the floor of the ulcer will be pale pink in color the pale pink in color is because of less of uh budding capillaries are more of fibroblastic elements that suggests a chronic ulcer or callous ulcer so whenever you have an ulcer these are the three subheadings under which you will have to clinically diagnose a ulcer or clinically clinical classification of ulcer is based on all these three healing non healing or callous so whenever you are talking about pathological classification of ulcer pathological classification of ulcer can be either specific ulcer non specific ulcer or malignant ulcer specific ulcers are always associated with specific illnesses such as tuberculosis syphilis or any other malignant illness or any system illnesses non specific ulcers are the ones where you have a pathology underlying that especially when the patient has got a arterial blockage the patient might present with a arterial ulcer <coughs> especially punched out edges whenever the patient has got a diabetic foot the patient might have punched out edges the floor will have zero purulent discharge necrotic debris foul smelling discharge all these are characteristic of an arterial ulcer a venous ulcer always will have a sloping edge and the floor will contain slough and necrotic debris at certain places when it is infected and the surrounding area will be hyperpigmented in a venous ulcer similarly a tubercular ulcer tubercular ulcer will have undermined edges so another type of specific or uh, non specific ulcer where you have uh, specific ulcer where you have um, diseases associated with that are especially syphilitic ulcers which has punched out edges so when you consider specific ulcers these are always associated with specific illnesses tuberculosis syphilis sarcoidosis crohn's all these are areas where you have specific ulcers that is systemic illnesses are associated non specific ulcers are the ulcers where you have no pathology exactly a systemic pathology but it is because of certain other conditions which are contributory to the ulcer arterial ulcer venous ulcer tropic ulcer trophic ulcer trophic ulcer and arterial ulcers are usually the same especially it has a punched out edge it has a unhealthy floor where you have necrotic debris foul smelling discharge and other substances which usually contribute to necrotic debris and especially when you consider a tubercular ulcer it has undermined edges the undermining of edges of a tubercular ulcer is because of the subcutaneous tissue being eaten away more than the skin so when you raise the skin you'll have more of a floor of the ulcer below the skin than what you can visualize that is why it is called undermined edges and another non specific type of ulcer is called martyral ulcer especially hypertensive ulcers they are all punched out edges multiple very painful especially in the calf of the patient martyral ulcer another type of ulcer is called melinis ulcer melinis ulcer is otherwise called a synergistic gangrene of melini that means it is because of uh, uh, various predisposing uh, lesions which are present especially empyema thoracis or laparotomy wound which has got infected with synergistic microorganism especially microurophilic streptococci and staphylococcus and they eat away tissues very painful ulcers and the edges are undermined classically melinis ulcer will have end of undermined edges with copious seropurulent discharge so when you consider these ulcers it is very important 
that you'll have to diagnose a non-specific ulcer and you'll have to give a clinical diagnosis as to what the ulcer is initially and then give a pathological classification and contribute to that by adding what is the pathology which has contributed to the ulcer. The other type of pathological classification as I told you is a uh, malignant ulcer. So just to recap what I told you, a non pathological classification comprises specific ulcers, associated specific illnesses like TB, syphilis, other diseases, systemic illnesses, non-specific ulcers, especially venous ulcers, arterial ulcers, martial ulcer, Bellini's ulcer, tropic ulcers, trophic ulcers. These are all non-specific ulcers. And then your malignant ulcers. Malignant ulcers are associated with any particular malignancy, especially when you consider uh, either it might be a squamous cell carcinoma where the edges are everted, fungating because mitosis increases and the vascularity overgrows the tumor, the, the tumor cells overgrow the vascularity and sometimes it sloughs off. So there will be copious vascularity in there and when you touch these ulcers, usually there is bleeding on touch. That's very, very important. Squamous cell carcinomas bleed on touch. So that is about uh, malignant ulcers. The other type of malignant ulcer is basal cell carcinoma where you have rolled out edges. Especially it is seen in the line which connects the tragus to the angle of the mouth and superior to that you have the basal cell carcinoma so rodent ulcer it eats into the tissues basically it doesn't have lymphatic metastasis but it eats onto the ulcer so that's very very important that you have to identify basal cell carcinoma other type of malignant ulcer is a malignant melanoma especially it arises from a junctional nevus which is present in the basal layer and it can be pigmented when it appears black or it might be on uh, different types of colors, irregularity in the nervous, discharge from there, itching, increase in size. All these are contributory that this has turned a benign nervous has turned into malignancy and it is a, uh, undergoing a malignant change. When it metastasizes to the regional lymph node, it gives nodules in way. They are called in transit nodules. And around the primary lesion, within two centimeters of the primary lesion, you have small small nodules. They are called satellite nodules. So, in malignant melanoma, in between the primary lesion and the lymph node uh, draining area, the nodules which are present, which are bigger in size, are called in-transit nodules. And small, small nodules around the primary uh, pathology or the primary malignant ulcer, especially a malignant melanoma, which is pigmented or might not be pigmented depending on the type of malignant melanoma, within 2 cm of the primary lesion, they are called as satellite nodules. So, when you talk about ulcers, it is a broad diaspora of various contributing factors which have to be brought in, conceptualized, interpreted and given a clinical diagnosis. So always ulcers have to be examined under inspection and palpation. So palpation, the base is always a palpatory finding. The other findings can be seen or can be inspected, but never give a diagnosis based on a base which is on an inspection. So always the, the base is a palpatory finding and other findings which you confirm by doing palpation are the inspectory findings which were told initially. So whenever you see an ulcer, when you take a proper history, when you take a diagnosis of that and present, primarily you give a diagnosis of a clinical classification that is either it's a healing or a non-healing or spreading or a callus or a chronic ulcer. So these are the factors in which you decide what type of an ulcer it is, what are you planning to do. So whenever you have an ulcer, you have to find out the pathology first. What is the contributing comorbidity? If it's a venous ulcer, you'll have to treat the venous insufficiency. Either you'll have to place the patient under Bisgard's regime, see that the ulcer heals, and then treat the patient by uh, doing a, a definitive procedure for the venous insufficiency, either a minimally invasive or a Trendlenburg with multiple perforated ligation. If the patient has got a trophic ulcer because of a vascular insufficiency or because of increased pressure on that particular area you have to see that there is offloading you have to see that the atherosclerotic disease is tackled by giving atorvastatins increase in blood supply and if the patient is a diabetic you have to see that diabetes is controlled well so that the blood glucose levels and the tissue glucose levels in the process are controlled so that it doesn't have much of a effect on the bacterial load or the bacterial load comes down and you're treating with supportive antibiotics and other um, conservative methods such as dressing and other healing uh, measures. So whenever you have an ulcer, it's very, very important. Sometimes you have an ulcer which is not healing, you're not able to determine the pathology. The other investigation which you can do, 
is a edge biopsy or a wedge biopsy from the edge of the ulcer. You take from the normal part, overlapping the normal part with the part of the ulcer so that you can determine the uh, pathology by comparing the normal area with the abnormal area. So if it's a malignant ulcer, you can know. If it's a squamous cell carcinoma, you'll have keratin pearls. You will have uh, um, worlds which are present in that. You'll have uh, altered nucleocytoplasmic ratio, with hyperchromatic nucleus. All these things will contribute to your diagnosis, especially when you take a wedge biopsy of the ulcer. So depending on the diagnosis, you'll have to treat the pathology, you'll have to address the ulcers. And whenever you have infected ulcer, always take a culture sensitivity, sensitivity from the ulcer. Take a swab and after 48 hours when you get a um, culture report, you change the antibiotics according to the culture sensitivity report. Sometimes you might get multi-drug resistant uh, organism or you can get a, a methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. You have to change the antibiotic accordingly, otherwise it won't help in healing the ulcer. And along with that, you'll have to have daily dressings of the ulcers. So with daily dressings of the ulcers, treating the primary cause and uh, or mitigating the primary cause and then treating the supporting infecting agents by support by beating and controlling the infecting agents, you can definitely cure an ulcer which sometimes might be very cumbersome and patients might go from different hospitals to hospitals seeking treatment for that. So always it is important that you diagnose. If you have a tubercular ulcer, if you give antibiotics, it won't heal. If you have doubt, always do a wedge biopsy and that wedge biopsy will show you uh, caseating granulomas, epithelioid cells, uh, giant cells, all these will contribute to diagnosis and these patients won't benefit by giving uh, normal antibiotics. You'll have to give anti-TB regime, either a six months or a nine months regime where these patients get cured. So it's very, very important that you'll have to treat the specific ulcers. And especially when you're talking about tubercular ulcer, it's very, very important that you should know what is the type of floor in a tubercular ulcer. Just to contribute to what I have told you, the floor will have apple jelly granulation. The floor in a tubercular ulcer will have apple jelly granulation. If you've seen Kisan uh, mixed fruit jam, the color of it when you spread it over a bread, the same consistency and the color will be in the granulation of a tubercular ulcer. That's called apple jelly granulation. Whenever you have a tubercular uh, syphilitic ulcer, especially the slough which is present over it will be dark or gray in color. That is called washed leather slough. Washed leather slough. So when you have such things, you can straight away diagnose based on your findings and then you can diagnose what is your um, ulcer all about. And especially when you have malignant ulcer, especially a squamous cell carcinoma, never forget examining the regional lymph nodal areas or an ulcer which is present in a particular area. Always examine the regional lymph node where you're draining areas. Otherwise, you'll be missing important findings. A squamous cell carcinoma metastasis and the lymph nodes will be uh, hard in consistency, non-tender. When you have a syphilitic ulcer, the lymph nodes will be shorty. Uh, so depending on the type of ulcer or if it's an inflammatory pathology, the lymph nodes will be enlarged and tender. So depending on the site of pathology, always see that you examine the draining lymph nodal region. If it is ulcer which is present in the leg, always examine the inguinal region. If it's an ulcer which is present in the hands, examine the um, axilla. If it's present in the abdomen above the umbilicus examine the axilla if it's in the present below the umbilicus examine the inguinal region so examination of regional lymph nodal draining areas is as equally important as drain examining the primary ulcer and the ulcer site so depending on this you will have arrived a diagnosis and you can treat and you can cure patients and whenever you have an exam you have to give specific diagnosis specific treatment protocols and depending on what your diagnosis is you'll have to treat and diagnosis is always based on clinical science which i've told you and the diagnosis always should be based on scientific approach rather than just uh, broad dressings and other broad spectrum antibiotics without any scientific evidence so i hope all of you have understood what is an ulcer how you approach an ulcer how do you classify ulcers how you present ulcers especially when you have long case or for that matter you have a uh, long question or problem based question on based on this any of this can be a long question a problem based question a short note or when you have a short case in the final MBBS practical exam these are the things which are going to be asked to you 
and when the examiner is expecting an answer from you, he's just under wanting to know the basics and your basic understanding of what you know about these things. So hopefully this will help you in understanding everything about an ulcer and if you know and read compounded on what we have taught you, you will definitely benefit from this. So wishing you all the best. Thank you.